here at the entrance to a building and I want to show you here we've got a, a pathway that sort of extends along what is the, the main building and then we have this lower area down here which is the street level or the pathway where people enter from the street up the staircase onto this landing which is what we would call an open landing because it can be accessed from here and accessed from there and uh, up into the building. Now within this design we have this real problem because we've got this massive massive bit of tactile ground surface indicators like this there's heaps of them um, and the problem is with this is it's hard to know if you are a blind or vision impaired person where the tactile pad starts and where it finishes it's it's a huge amount of tactiles I mean that's 1.2 meters uh, deep so why this has occurred is because either the building or this uh, staircase here was designed I'm thinking I'm you know suggesting that it may have been done at different times so this staircase if that was 600 millimeters closer towards the building line the tactiles would still be inside the building line but we'd actually have some form of gap or space between the tactile pad um, which would be much more useful for this walkway anyway from an accessibility terms so when we're designing uh, existing work and matching it with new work it's really important that we consider these accessible paths to the left and to the right and also to the ups and the downs or the north and the south because this kind of amount of tactile indicators is really confusing for someone who is blind or vision impaired. It's best to get the design right because tactile ground surface indicators cannot and will not ever fix bad design.